Hello, good morning to all. I hope you are all keeping fine and busy studying your lessons. And we will give you more input. And we are studying a very interesting topic that is about the story of a village, how the people of that village are managing their daily activities, their financial activities, their works, everything. So we have already seen a few points how the life situation in Palambo, how they are managing their daily life. Now let us see how the land is distributed. How the land is distributed in the village. The early class we said almost 80 percentage of the land is belonging to the uh, rich people, rich farmers and only just 20 percentage of the land is belonging to the other, other poor people. So it is the land is not distributed equally. That is the one thing that I we need to realize, we need to explain. And we know the rich people, they don't do much cultivation, but they do uh, lending. They lend the land. The rich people lend the land to the poor people so that they can cultivate. So they have not only the power to cultivate them, they don't own the land, they don't really possess the land. Okay, let us take lesson number 1, page 6. Number 4. How is land distributed between farmers of Palampur? You must have realized how important land is for farming. So, that is very much understood. Without land, we cannot think about farming at all. So, it is very much important. The land is needed. Without land, no farming. And unfortunately, not all the people engaged in agriculture have sufficient land for cultivation. And in Palampur, about one third of the 450 family, 50 families are landless. So we said there are 450 families are there. Among them, one third of them are landless. So you can imagine what a pathetic situation are there. So one third of them. How many families will be there? If you calculate one third, divide 450 by 3, you will find one third. How many it is? How much? It will come 150. So 150 families have no land at all. One third, 150 families they have no land at all. And most of them are Dalits. So most of these poor people belonging to this 100 fam 150 families, they are Dalit people. They, they are very poor and have no land for cultivation. Of the remaining families who own land, 240 families cultivate small plots of land, less than 2 hectares in size. Then another, so here they have no land. And here 240 of them, they have 2 hectares of land. So they have small plot of land. 240 families, they have small plot, less than 2 hectares of land land in size. Then cultivation of such plots doesn't bring adequate income to the farm, farmer family. So cultivating in this small hectare, a small area, they don't get much profit after the cultivation. They end up in losing all that they have also. So they end up in, uh, at the end, they end up in lose and they are just uh, struggling to manage their family affairs. And in 1960, 
Gobind was a farmer with 2.25 hectares of largely unirrigated land. Let's see an example of a farmer from there. In the year 1960, there was a farmer called Gobind and he had just 2.25 hectares. 2.25 hectares, that is unirrigated. <coughs> the land was unirrigated, that means there was no facility of irrigation, no water supply. And though they didn't have very comfortably, though they didn't live very comfortably, the family managed to feed itself with a little bit of extra income from one buffalo that the family possessed. So from the farming there was no much income because it is an unirrigated land and they cannot cultivate throughout the year, they can cultivate only when the monsoon season comes. And so from the farm they have hardly any income. But the family was just able to manage because they had one buffalo. Maybe they will go for plowing the field of others and they will get a little money. So that is how the family was just managing by doing work with the buffalo that they had. Then some years after Gobind's death, this land was divided among his three sons. And each one now has a plot of land that is only 0.75 hectare in size. So Gobind became old and he died and he had three sons. So the sons will get the property of the father. The father had 2.25 hectares. That will be divided equally for the three sons. So one son will get just 0.75 hectare. So the father had 2.25 then when it reached the sun's time, it became less than 1 hectare, just 0.75 hectare. And even with improved irrigation and modern farming method, Gobind's sons are not able to make a living from their land. So, they are getting just 0.75. Improved the facility and so irrigation facility already brought so they can cultivate more times in a year, maybe two times. But still even after with the facility of irrigation, they are not able to manage their family. It is not sufficient for them. And they have to look for additional work during part of the year. So since what is coming from this farm, that income or that profit is not able to support their families. So what they need is, they need to look for some extra work. If there is some other extra work, especially when there is the farming is not possible, maybe during the dry season, they will go and try to do some other work and get some extra income in order to support their families. And you can see the large number of small plots scattered around the village in the picture. So you can see there is a picture, small small areas, that is a small small plots owned by different people. So that is a situation in Parampur village, how the land is um, divided. Some of them are very small, some of them are little big and so on. So the land was not equally divided, it was a very some people have got plenty and some people have no land and some people have got very less land. And these are cultivated by small farmers. On the other hand, more than half of the area of the village is covered by plots that are quite large in size. So you can see some of the plots are very large. So half of the village area we can say that is having big plots, big areas. So in Palapu, there are 60 families of medium and large farmers who cultivate more than 2 hectares of land. So in that village, how many people are there having plenty of land? They have 60 families of medium and large farmers and they have more than 2 hectares of land. A few of the large farmers have land extending over 10 hectares or more. So some farmers, they have so much of land. They have more than 10 hectares of land. Some people are struggling here with the less than 1 hectare. Then some other farmers, big farmers, they have got more than 10 
hectares. You can imagine the difference between the rich people and the poor one and the poor people. The rich people they have got plenty of land and they will be able to cultivate nicely and get plenty of profit. But the poor people they have very little land. However hard they are working, the profit that they get will be very little. Then you can also see in the picture in the next page what are the differences between the poor people and the rich people. So the poor people they do everything manually. They plow the field with bulls. They do the work with hands, manual work and so on. While the rich person they are able to plow the field with a tractor and their work will be able to get over faster and so on. <coughs> and you also can see in the diagram given there so this is the total cultivation cultivated area and 36 percentage of the land that the area that is given in the blue shade that is the area cultivated by the poor people or the small farmers and 64 percentage is cultivated by rich farmers then in the second diagram we find about the number of farmers so the color that is given in the yellow yellow shade that is the 20 percentage so only 20 percentage of the people are cultivating in this large area so this yellow area that is cultivated by just 20 percentage of the people and the rest 80 percentage of the people they are cultivating in this 36 percentage of the land so you can see the difference the larger the uh, number of people they have little la little land and smaller the number of people that is the rich people and they have plenty of land to cultivate so the rich have got plenty of area the small people they are more in number but they have little area to cultivate that is a situation in Palampur that's why the difference between the rich and the poor that is increasing in that village now let us see about labor how the labor is taking place labor we said small people or the rich people have got plenty of land and the poor people have got small area of land now who will provide the labor who will work in the field that is a uh, question that we are going to ask next we are trying to find out how is the solution so after land labor is the next necessary factor for production so first we said land is required so we saw land now second one is labor it is not enough to have the land alone if the land is remaining there nothing will be produced there people have to work there and then only the production will take place so the second important factor is labor then families requiring a great deal of hard work so farming requires a great deal of hard work and small farmers along with their families cultivate their own fields thus they provide the labor required for farming themselves medium and large farmers hire farm laborers to work on their field so people who have a small plot of land they don't need much workers they all the members of the family will go and work in the field and cultivate so they don't need to hire other people they have got enough people in their own family but farmers who are medium and farmers who are having large areas they are they don't have enough members to work from their own family so they need to go and hire the workers from outside there are many people we said in the beginning without land landless laborers are there and so we said around 150 families they have no land so they always go and work in other fields so these medium farmers and the large farmers they go and hire the workers from this so that is how they 
get the sufficient labor. So farm laborers come either from landless families or families cultivating small plots of land. So people who have no land, they will go, they will be ready to go and work in other scale. And people with a very small plot of land, they can finish up their work very fast because their land is very small. After that, in order to survive their family, they need to do some additional work. So they are also willing to go to this uh, uh, land, which are very big, very large, and there will be plenty of job opportunities. And therefore, they will go on and they are going to work there, willing to work there. So unlike farmers, farm laborers do not have the right to the right over crops grown in the land. So that we know. People who are hired to work in the farm, they have no right over the land or right over the harvest. They cannot say, this is planted by us, so we will take it. No. They are working and they are given wages. Therefore, the product belongs to the owner of the land. The master or the owner will take the products. Others are only there to do the work. And as a reward for their hard work, they will be given uh, some money. The wages will be given. And you can see a story board is given there. A conversation between two people. Let us just read it out. It is difficult to find work these days. Only the large farmers hire us and that too for very limited number of days. So the man says, these days we have no work, people are not calling us and only the rich people can call us and they will call us only for few days. And the lady says, Gensiam, the large farmer has just brought a harvester, so we are going to get even less work during the harvest season this year. Last year, I worked for less than five months in the whole year. So the lady says, there is a rich farmer in the village and he has bought a harvester. Harvester means a machine for harvesting. So the machine has come to do the harvesting work and we will lose our work again. The less work will be given to us. And altogether, she could work last year was only five months. After that, there was no more work available. Therefore. She was simply sitting at home another seven months. More than half of the year she was simply sitting without doing much work. So, because the work is not available. And we have tractors for plowing, harvesters for harvesting, threshers for threshing, even for removing weeds, some farmers spray weedy side. So the man says, people are using more and more modern technique. They are using different machines for plowing, tractors they use, harvesters for harvesting, then threshers for threshing, then for removing weeds they are spraying the pesticide. So people have no work. Everything is done by the machines, the, family, the tractors and other modern methods and techniques. So people are not getting work. Nobody is calling them to do the work. The work that before people were doing now it is done by the machine. Therefore, the people have no work. That's why they are really feeling the sad that they don't feel have the work. Then she says, This year I will have to look for work in brick making unit in Dragons. So she says, I'm sitting at home, I have no work, and nobody is calling me in the field also very few days, only work is available. Therefore, I will go to the bricks making unit. So nearby there is a bricks factory is there. People are making bricks. You know bricks, the um, stone like type that is made by the made with the mud in order to build the house bricks. So she says I will go and work there so that I will get more work and I will get more money. And the man says I owe the local money lender 2000 I had taken 1000 last summer when no work was available in the field. How will I ever repay? I hardly earn enough for two square meals. The man says his life is very pitiable, very, con very pathetic condition. He had borrowed from the money lender 1000 rupees last year. Now it has become 2000 because the interest is very high. Within one year it became double 
and he says how am i going to repay that i am just struggling to find two meals in a day so i am really poor i have no work and i am struggling and as the uh, time is delayed more and more the amount also is being increased last year it was 1000 this year it became 2000 and next year it may become 3000 and more and so the more delay is brought the more amount is increased so the man also is really worried and the lady says my situation is not much better due to past debt the money lenders refused to give me any loan so the lady says i also had taken loan from the money lender previously and i have not paid back therefore they are not willing to give me more loan again now i have no money in my hand i have i have no way to survive i am struggling so that is a real situation of the farmers in this balapur village they are struggling the farmers without land they don't have work also they don't have land to work also and they are going and borrowing money and the interest rate is very high and so the poor people are really suffering that is a situation in this palagur village now instead they are paid wages by the farmer for whom they work wages can be in cash or in kind example crop so people those who have no land they go and work in others field whenever they call them they can go and work there and they will get cash or kind so the owner of the land the big business big farmers those who are hiring these laborers they will say we will pay in cash or we will pay in kind so cash means they will get money at the end of the work and kind means after the harvest they may be given a share of paddy or share of rice and so on. So whatever they want the big farmer is willing to pay either cash or kind or things. And sometimes laborers get meals also. Sometimes the farmers they get the meal, they pay, they give meal. And wages vary widely, vary from region to region, from crop to crop, and from farm activity to another, like sowing and harvesting. And again, the labor charge is not same everywhere. From region to region, it is different. Some places it may be 100, another place it may be 80, or another place it may be 60, or some places it may be uh, 30. So, it is different from uh, different area to area and also from work to work for planting one rate is there for harvesting another rate is there for weeding another rate is there for digging another rate is there so for doing different different work there is different different uh, rates are there and there is also a wide variation in the duration of employment and the normal rule in our country is that the work time should be 6 hours but it is different from place to place some places they are made to work 8 hours, 7 hours or 9 hours and so on so the work time also is not uniform in our country a farm laborer might be employed on a daily basis or for one particular farm activity like harvesting or for the whole year so a farm laborer might be employed on a daily basis so the employer will say i will call you whenever there is work you come and work and i will give you one day's wage if there are two days work i will call you for two days and so they are not appointed permanently like our government officers or other officers they are appointed permanently and they get their money every month whether there is work in the office or no work in the office they will get the payment but the laborers are not like that they will be called only when there is work daily wage daily basis if today there is work i will call them if tomorrow no work i will not call them and they will be paid only for the days they are working without work they will not be paid and dala is a landless 
farm laborer who works on daily wages in Palamu. So we come across another laborer, a landless laborer, a poor farmer, and his name is Dala. And this means he must regularly look for work. So the farmer who has no land at all, he cannot uh, work in his own farm, he has no land. Therefore, every day he has to look for work. He will be waiting for somebody to uh, call him to do the work. If he does not get one day's work, then that day he has no income and his family will be starving. And therefore, those farmers situation, those farmers who are landless, their situation is really pathetic. They are eagerly waiting to, for somebody to call them to do the work. So if no work, they have no payment and their family will be starving. And the minimum wages for a farm laborer set by the government is 60 per day. So the one day's wage to work in the farm is 60 rupees. That is a normal wage. It's a all the time. Now it has been increased. So let us say about it is was in 1960 and so maybe some 50 years ago, 60 years ago, this was an amount for one day's work. Now, but Dana gets only 35 to 40 rupees. So though the government is asking to pay the laborers 60 rupees per day. The worker is getting only sometimes 35 rupees, sometimes 40 rupees. He is not getting the full payment. What is the reason? There is heavy competition for work. So the reason is there is a heavy competition for work. So there are many people are there. We saw 150 uh, families are landless laborers. They are all ready to do the work in order to manage their family, in order to get their daily wages. So they are ready to work. So the rich farmers will see so many people are there waiting for work. They have no land of their own. So they are waiting for somebody else to call them to go and work in their land. Therefore, they are very eager to get that work. And all cannot get the work because there is not enough uh, place for them or Enough people are not calling all of them. Therefore, everybody is eagerly waiting. Call me, call me, I am ready to come to your work. So, the big farmers, they will take advantage of that. They will say, okay, I will call you, but I will pay you less. If you are ready, then come. So, I will not pay you 60. I will pay you only 35. Or I will pay only 40. So, when these farmers look at, if I don't accept this small amount, then I have no work, I will have to start, my family will have to start. So poor fellows, they will agree, okay, pay me only 35, I will come, please give me the job. So they are exploiting the poor farmers, the rich farmers are exploiting the poor farmers by making them to work uh, with a less payment. That is a very a serious crime, we can say, not paying to them the a lot a lot wages the proper wages they are cheating the farmers and the farmers who are so poor and their family may be starving and therefore they have no other option other than accepting this class accepting this uh, same small amount and so people agree to work for lower wages and Dala complains about the situation to Ramkhali who is another farm laborer both Dala and Ramkhali are among the poorest people in the village. That is what we saw in the previous page. The discussion between two farmers. Those who, both of them are poor. So that is the situation taking place. Though they are supposed to get 60, but they get only 35 or 40. So the large farmers, they get, they make profit. They are supposed to give to the farm workers when what they are supposed to give, they are not giving and so they are accumulating it for themselves and they become richer and richer and the poor farmers become poorer and poorer. Very uh, bad situation, very pathetic situation the people are facing there. Then let us ask, let us discuss a few things. 
Why are farm laborers like Dala and Ramkali poor? So can you say we already explained why are they poor? Because they have no land of their own and they have to go and work in others' field. And that work is not available always. They will get work only a few days. We said the lady Ramkali telling that last year I got work only just for five months. So with that five months work, she has to survive along with her family for 12 months. Imagine, just five months work and with that money she has to manage for 12 months. So that is really difficult. So they have to go and borrow money from money lenders to buy rice and other things for their family. And they are not able to pay back in time because the interest is increasing higher and going higher and higher and it becomes really difficult for them. So they are really struggling. The man situation also is like that. So the first reason why they are poor is they have no land of their own. And secondly, we said they don't have work every day. And thirdly, we said they are not paid full. Whenever they go for working, they are not paid full. They are paid only just half or something. Because there is a big competition. Many other people are also waiting to work. So if they don't agree for this small amount, they say, I have to get full amount, then only I will work. Then the rich farmer will go and somebody else who are willing to work for lower wages. So everybody will be agreeing to work, even for the small uh, small wage, for 35 or 40 also is enough. Please call me, they will say that. So their family will become poor and poor. They are working hard but they are not getting enough rewards. They will become poorer and poorer. That is the situation they will be facing. Then, second question let us discuss is, Gosaipur and Majauli are two villages in North Bihar. Out of a total of 850 households in two villages, there are more than 250 men who are employed in rural Punjab and Haryana or in Delhi, Mumbai, Surat, Hyderabad or Nagpur. Such migration is common in most villages across India. Why do people migrate? Can you describe, based on your imagination, the work that the migrants of Saipur and Majauli might do at the place of destination? So we see another example in two villages in Bihar. So out of the 850 families, more than 250 people are migrated. Migrated means they change the place, they go to other states like Punjab, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Surat, Mumbai, Hyderabad and so on to do work there. What is the reason? Why can't they work in their village and why should they go to another place? Because works are not enough. Sufficient works are not there in their own village. So if they remain in their village, they may get work only for a few days. Afterwards there is no work and their family will be starving. And so they go out to other states where there are more work is available. Maybe farm work, maybe garden work, whatever work is available they are ready to do. And they search for that work and they go in and they go and work there. So they go there not because they don't like to work in their place but just because there is not enough work in their place. They don't have enough opportunities in their, in their village. Therefore, they go to other villages in other states where there are more works available. They go there in order to get the work and do the work and get the wages and support their families. That is what they are doing. So let us wind it up this topic today and let us take the next day other important thing of the factors of production we said land, labor and capital. So in the next class we shall study about capital. So thank you for listening. Bye.